lovely people. Uh, welcome to your bedtime story. <laughs> no, not really, but as you can see, I have my cardigan on. I have my mermaid cat unicorn, mercatical, nighty on, <laughs> and I have my teddy. Uh, and this is, uh, I blame this entirely on my lovely Twitter friend Emma Moose, uh, who said to me that I should uh, read you all a um, bedtime story. And she said this to me a few months ago, um, but, but yes, I'm getting to it. It takes me a while sometimes. <laughs> um, and so what we'll be reading today is A Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, I loved Robert Louis Stevenson when I was a kid. I um, absolutely adored uh, Treasure Island and Kidnapped. Um, I read anything of his I could get my hands on and I still do read his now and then. Uh, recently I discovered Travels in the Cévennes uh, with a donkey which was fantastic. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, and yeah, when I was growing up, I actually, I lived on a boat in Tonga, which is a, um, a small island group in the South Pacific, and it's quite near Samoa. And you may or may not know that Robert Louis Stevenson spent a lot of time in Samoa, and he's actually buried there. And I still remember very clearly climbing up to his grave, which is on a hill above the, above the harbour in Pango Pango in American Samoa. And it's got there part of a verse inscribed on his gravestone. And that verse is... Um, <laughs> Under the wide and starry sky, dig my grave and let me lie. Glad did I live and gladly die and lay me down with a will. This be the verse you carve for me. Here he lies where he longed to be. Home is a sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter home from the hill. Layla's coming for her bedtime story. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so remembering little snippets like that, which I learned when I was about eight years old, I think is the most likely explanation as to why I don't remember things like replying to emails or whether to buy milk or not. Um, so I blame Robert Louis Stevenson for that, really. <laughs> Um, okay, so A Child's Garden of Verses. I had a beautiful hardcover copy of this when I was a kid, and I have no idea what happened to it, but I hope it ended up in a good home. Um, and Robert Louis Stevenson, when he was a kid, was apparently a pretty sickly child, and he spent a lot of time at home being looked after by his nanny um, in bed. And this, these poems, to me, always seem to be really a record of what he was, of his imagination at that time, uh, where he's creating creating countrysides out of the bedspread and having armies fighting each other across them and he's dreaming of all the things that he's going to do and he's going to be able to get up and, and be moving again um, and it's quite lovely you, you do get the sense throughout it of, of quite a lonely child and I imagine he probably was if he was kept at home a lot um, but one of these if I can find it I don't know what I've done with my bookmark <laughs> here we go travel so that's quite a lovely picture there. So this is what I'm going to read to you. Um, as you can see, Layla's intrigued. Yes, absolutely fascinated. So, I should like to rise and go where the golden apples grow, where below another sky, parrot islands anchored lie, and watch by cockatoos and goats, lonely crusoes building boats. Where in sunshine reaching out, eastern cities miles about, are with mosque and minaret, among sandy gardens set. And the rich goods from near and far hang for sale in the bazaar, where the great wall round China goes, and on one side the desert blows, and with bell and voice and drum, cities on the other hum, where a forest hot as fire, wide as England, tall as a spire, full of apes and coconuts, and the local hunter's huts, where the knotty crocodile lies and blinks in the Nile, and the red flamingo flies, hunting fish before his eyes, where in jungles near and far, man-devouring tigers are, lying close and giving ear, lest the hunt be drawing near, or a kamabai be seen, swinging in a palaquin, where among the desert sands, some deserted city stands, all its children sweep and prince, grown to manhood ages since, not a foot in street or house, not a stir of child or mouse, and when kindly falls the night, in all the town no spark of light, there I'll come when I'm a man, with a, carol, with a camel caravan, light a fire in the gloom of some dusty dining room, see the pictures on the walls, heroes, fights and festivals, and in the corner find the toys of the old Egyptian boys. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it's not my favourite one. My favourite one is I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me, and what can be the use of him is more than I can see. Um, Oh, that actually is how it goes. I'm surprised I remember that. Okay. I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me, and what can be the use of him is more than I can see. He is very, very like me from the heels up to the head, and I see him jump before me when I jump onto my bed. Uh, and there are three other verses, but I think that's probably enough. 
Um, okay, so thanks for listening to me today. Um, and yeah, are there any particular books that you remember from your childhood which you've rediscovered now and still think it kind of wonderful? Uh, and if so, I would love to hear your bedtime stories. <laughs> okay, so from Layla and I. <laughs>